Hello? This video was sponsored by Policy Genius. Darn kids, I'll get you. Hi. <laughs> I always wanted to be the grumpy guy next door. Hey, in this video, treehouse looks a little different. We got windows in, we got siding on, we got the soffit all done. So if you want to see how we got here, well, just watch the video and check out the link in the video description for a link to our Patreon and tools and supplies, all sorts of other stuff. Okay, y'all come back real soon now, you hear? All right, the last time you saw this thing, we had just put the metal roof on. Now, there was still a little bit of sheathing left to do on those peaks on the front and back, so I got that done, and then my friend Jeffrey Leatherman from Jeffrey Leatherman Woodworks decided to come help me add the house wrap to the outside of the entire building. I've never put house wrap on a building before, but I'm pretty sure you just staple it on. So we started at the bottom, added a row of staples, and then pulled it tight up to the top and we stapled it in up there. Now, I think the reason you put this up is in the name, Moisture Barrier, but I really don't know exactly what it does. I've just seen them do this on houses in the neighborhood, so I thought I should do it. After I got one layer up, I decided to mark out on the Moisture Barrier where all of my studs were, because I'm gonna need to know where those studs are when it's time to add our siding. So I just used the track from my track saw and drew a line in the center of every single stud, right on top of the moisture barrier. Then we added some more up at the peak and we moved around to the other side. All in all, this is a pretty simple process. You just gotta pretend your tree fort or house or whatever you're wrapping is a giant piece of leftovers from your favorite restaurant and you're wrapping it up to save it for later. And you don't want any water to get in and spoil your food. So you wrap it real tight to keep the water out. We made sure to leave a little overhang on the back that we could wrap around the corner once we got the side done, and then I started cutting out the windows. I wasn't sure exactly how to do this, but I figured I needed to leave a little bit extra so that I could kind of wrap it inside the windows. So after cutting out inside each window, I cut a little slit in every corner so that I could fold the moisture barrier onto the windowsill and staple it in place. This is where I made my first big mistake, and I stapled it on all four sides, which is gonna come back to bite me later, because, well, I don't know how windows are installed. If I did know how windows were installed, I wouldn't have stapled that top part of the windowsill. And again, you'll see why here in a little bit. But in the meantime, me and Jeff, without knowing that we were doing anything wrong, just kept wrapping everything up. Our food was almost safe. I figured a door was the same as a window, so I went ahead and cut that out too, leaving a little bit extra, once again, so that I could tuck it inside the door frame and staple it in place. Do a little slit in each corner. See, that part was right. What was wrong was stapling it on the top. You can staple it on the sides, that's fine. Just don't staple it on the top like we did look at this bunch of amateurs and not only did we staple it we put a lot of flipping staples in there because the more the merrier i thought staple 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 and then the next day my friend jared who works at a local glass company came out to help me install windows and what was the first thing he did he told me we had to take out all these staples on the top because he knows how to install windows, and I don't. So after putting all those staples in, we slowly pulled them all out. And then I guess you fold this moisture barrier up so you can drape it over your window. Oh. Now, I came to learn that installing windows involves a lot of tape. Who would have thought? Apparently there's this flashing tape that you put in when you install the windows and it keeps all the water out of everywhere that you don't want water. 
pretty slick. So Jared told me we had to start by putting a layer of this flashing tape on the bottom of our windowsill. Now it's kind of double-sided, so you can peel the paper off a half the side to start with. You stick it all inside your sill like this. I was just trying to pretend like I knew what I was doing and follow along with what Jared was doing. Then once you get it stuck on one side, you take a knife and you cut the corners so that you can fold it over around the outside. So Jared did his fancy thing with a knife, so I tried to do my fancy thing with a knife. And I think I did a pretty good job for my first attempt. Then, after you fold it around the corners and stick it on, you take another piece of this flashing tape and you kind of cover up that seam that you just made in each corner. Uh-huh, like this. And you leave that a little bit long and you cut a nice little slice in the middle of that and you fold it over. And now you've got a nicely flash taped window thingamabob. At this point, I thought we were ready to just plop the window in there. So I grabbed the window and I shoved it in the hole. And that's when Jared told me, whoa, buddy, slow down. We're not ready yet. We still got a lot to do. And he made me take the window back out. So much for trying to guess what was next. Next, he took some really goopy caulking stuff and he put it around three sides of the window both sides and the top to be precise. In my mind, I would have guessed you put it around all four sides, but he said you don't caulk the bottom, so just in case water was to get in, it would have a way to escape out the bottom. Pretty smart, did not know that. And then very carefully, with all that goopy caulking in there, we slid our window into place. I was ready to just screw it down, but Jared again was like, whoa buddy, not yet, and he checked to make sure that it was plumb, which I guess is a smart thing to do considering I was the one that did the framing, so you can't rely on the window hole to be square. When we realized it was plumb, I pushed it in and squeezed out all that goopy caulking around the outside, sealing it very nicely. Then from the inside, Jared shimmed up the window to make sure that it was centered in the window frame. Once it was all shimmed and centered, he used some screws and screwed the window in place. Now there's a bunch of holes around the window, and he said we didn't need to put screws in all the holes, just go every other one. That'll be plenty. He seemed like he knew what he was doing, so I trusted him. After that, we took some more of this flashing tape, and we stuck it on either side of the window. Like I said, a surprising amount of tape involved in installing windows, and I never knew. Then we put another piece of tape on the top. This extended out past those two pieces of tape on either side and went underneath the moisture barrier. This is why you can't staple the moisture barrier in place. Now I know. After we had that other piece of tape in, we folded down the moisture barrier on top of that piece of tape and we trimmed it down so it was just above the top of the window. Then we used some more flashing tape and we taped the seams that we created in that moisture barrier to seal them all up. And as if we didn't use enough tape already, we put one more piece over everything right along the top. And now we had one window installed. But that was the easy one. For the other windows, we're gonna need the scissor lift. Luckily, I never returned it after the roof, so we still had that to use. And we set to work installing the remaining windows. I was watching Jared work, and it was a thing to behold. He was cutting and slicing and taping like nobody's business. A true master of his craft. He started doing all the outside work, and I started shimming up the windows from the inside. But then when it came to this upper window, he said that he was confident enough in my skills to let me do this one all by myself. So I just followed along with the steps he showed me on the other two windows, and believe it or not, I only messed up once with the tape order, and we had to peel some tape off and redo it. But other than that, I did a pretty darn good job. While I was doing that upper window, he was adding tape to our last two side windows. I moved the scissor lift over there, and in no time we were plopping our last two windows into place. 
And with five windows under my belt, I was pretty much an expert window installer at this point. And they looked pretty darn good. A huge thanks to Jared from Davis Glass for helping me install these. I definitely would not have been able to do it without him. Well, I would have been able to do it, it just would have been done completely wrong and they probably would have leaked. Overall, I'm really happy with these windows. I tried to pick ones that would fit a treehouse pretty well. These ones crank open so you can still toss water balloons and stuff out of them. I'm not going to put screens in them because, you know, kids want to be able to climb out windows and fall to their death. It's just part of being a child. So with the windows done, it's time to move on to the siding. Now for the siding, this is something, again, I have never done before, but I've seen it done quite a bit. So I was a little more confident in the order of operations on this. The first thing we had to do was add all of our trim to the outside of the treehouse. Because when it comes to siding, we're gonna be using LP lap siding. So we put all the trim up first, and then we'll put the siding in between all of the trim. So I started grabbing pieces of trim off of our pile of wood and roughly cutting them down to size because these were too big to comfortably put on the chop saw. So I just broke them down a little bit with the track saw. Probably should have used a skill saw, but the track saw was already outside and I didn't want to walk all the way to the shop to get a different saw. Anyways, we started cutting down pieces of trim starting with this corner piece. Now. I've never trimmed out a house before, but I figured the easiest thing to do would be to make little corner cap pieces that we could just slide over the corners. So I ripped one piece down so that it was an inch less in width than our standard trim piece. That way when I hooked the little corner pieces together, it was the same width on both sides, so it'd have a nice profile to it. I squirted a little all-weather caulking in the seam, and I just used some deck screws to hook it together. Now we got a little corner piece. So we stuck it on our corner, used a level to make sure it was nice and plumb, and screwed it in place. One trim piece down. A couple more to go. Then we did the exact same thing over on the other side. Now, to make our siding go on as easy as possible, we really wanted to make sure that these two trim pieces were perfectly parallel to each other. That way we didn't have to measure for every single piece of siding. We would just know the distance all the way up. Once we got our two corners trimmed out, next we had to trim out the window. So luckily I set up my chop saw inside the treehouse so we had a nice little workspace to go in and make cuts on. This was much easier than trying to do everything with the skill saw. So I cut all my pieces down to trim out the window. I cut a piece to go in between the two windows, and then I cut this top piece. It extends past each window the length of one piece of trim. Then I put on my bottom piece of trim. This is the exact width of both windows. And after I got that piece on, I started hooking my side pieces on. Now these extend from the top of the window all the way down to the bottom of that base piece of trim. You might be saying, why did you do it this way? Well, I'm not sure why you do it this way, but this is how I've always seen windows trimmed out. And I think it has to do something with water running down that seam. You want those side pieces to extend past the window. So if water ever got in that seam between the trim and the window, it would be directed all the way down and wouldn't get hung up on that bottom piece of trim. At least that's what I think. Don't take my word on that. After the window was completely trimmed out, I added a little piece of flashing on top that will go underneath the siding. I'll show you exactly how I did that flashing a little bit later on in the video. Then before we started adding our siding, I needed to mark on this wall where all of my studs were. So it'd be really easy to just nail that siding, making sure I was hitting studs every time. So with one side completely trimmed out, I decided before we moved the scissor lift, we might as well just go ahead and put siding up. Hey, this video is sponsored by Policy Genius. Now recently, my wife decided that she's gonna stop working and I became the sole breadwinner in our family, which is great. She's gonna focus on being a mother, which was my idea, by the way. But it got me thinking, 
What happens if something happens to me? I'm the only one making money. Thankfully, we have life insurance. Now, if you don't have life insurance, you might be struggling because you don't want to do all the work it takes to get life insurance. Thankfully, Policy Genius makes it incredibly easy to find the right life insurance policy for you. And if you're wondering how, well, here, like this. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees, and your personal information is private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Let me guess. At this moment, you're like, whoa, that's incredible, Jason. Great information. But you forgot to tell me where I go and how I get started. <laughs> I didn't forget. I was just saving that for right now. Just head to policygenius.com slash bourbon moth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much money you could save. Cross one more thing off your to-do list and make sure that your family and loved ones are protected by finding the right life insurance policy. Now, I'm no expert, but I think it's called lap sighting because it laps over the, you know, every piece, you know, laps over the next piece. So it kind of layers. But the question is, how far do you make it lap? I didn't know. So I went over to the addition that we're having built because they already had the siding up and I made this little jig based off of how far they had their siding lapping over itself. In fact, I made two jigs in case one of them broke or I lost one or Craig wanted to use one. Turns out that they overlapped the siding exactly one inch in case you were wondering. Next, I needed to put up my first piece of siding and the first piece is the most important. You want it to be perfectly level because you're gonna base all the other pieces on this piece. So if it's not level, by the time you get to the top, things are gonna be a little wonky. So take your time and make sure that first piece is nice and level. Then, because I made those little jigs, installing the siding is super easy. You just hold it up there pull out the little jig to set how far up it needs to be and then boom it falls in your face because Craig wasn't helping me he was doing other stuff so I had to struggle alone but I realized that if I put my jig in the very center of the wall I could kind of balance the piece of siding on it this was setting my overlap I nailed it into a stud, and then I just had to work my way along the wall, making sure that it was overlapped the same amount on every part of the lower piece of siding. And all I had to do was make sure my nail was in that top one inch of the siding, so when I put my next piece on, I would cover up the nails, and it would be a nice, seamless look. So, using my fancy jig, I just started nailing pieces of siding in place. I gotta tell you, siding is super fun. I don't know what it is about it, but it's very satisfying. Maybe because you're taking this ugly moisture barrier taped up wall and making it look all clean. Maybe because it goes pretty quick once you start going. When I got up to the window, I took a full piece of siding and I just butted it right against the bottom of the window and took measurements off of the window trim for where I needed to cut out the siding. Then I took my jig and measured from the bottom of the window to the top of my jig and I knew that's how much siding I had to leave under that window. Again, the jig coming in clutch. Once I had all my measurements figured out, I just went down and I cut out that window space with my track saw, quick and easy, zip, zap, zoop, and now I had a piece that perfectly fit around the window. Again, not sure at all if this is how the pros would do it, but seemed to be working pretty darn good, especially since I'm doing this all by myself. Where the heck are you, Craig? It only took me about 15 minutes to get up to the window on this side of the treehouse. So yeah, I was cooking. And as far as I could tell, it was looking pretty nice. 
I did have to remind myself to keep marking my studs as I went up so that I didn't forget where those were. And once I got on either side of the window, things really started to go fast because I could just cut a bunch of pieces down to the same size, plop them in there, stick my jig on them to space them out, and boom, nail them in place. I was really feeling like I knew what I was doing. I don't know if you're supposed to be using a framing nail gun for this, but I just backed the PSI off so that the nail didn't go in too far. Oh, now that I'm almost done, Craig decides to show up for the last two pieces. I did the top of the window the exact same way I did the bottom of the window, cut out a little section so that it fit right over the top very nicely, and nailed it in place on all of my studs. Bing, bang, boom. When we got up to the very top, I just measured the distance from the top down to the top of my jig, and I ripped a piece down to that width. Then I stuck it up right underneath my soffit and nailed it in place. Now these nails will be exposed, but we can fill them with a little all-weather caulking, and once it's painted, you're never gonna notice. I don't think. And boom, one side completely done. Not bad for my first attempt at siding. Yes, I did just congratulate myself there. Next, we trimmed out the window and door on the front of the building. And let me show you exactly how I do this flashing on the top of the window trim. Basically, you wanna overhang the flashing about a half inch to three quarters of an inch on either side of the trim. Then you cut the flashing to length. Then you take your tin snips and you're gonna cut in that same distance that you overhung it on both sides on all of your seams. So on that seam and on that seam, just in the same distance as you have it overhanging. This is about a half inch. Once you do it to one side, you do the same thing to the other side. A little snip and a little snip, just like that. Then you plop your flashing back up on top of your window and you nail it in place with a few nails right through the metal. Boom, boom, boom. Then on the end of the flashing, you're gonna fold up this tab on the top. I just use the hammer and you're gonna bend in the tab on the front. Then you're gonna bend down the tab on the top and you're gonna make a nice little cap that goes over the top of your window trim and it'll keep all that water from running down behind your trim and sitting on top of your window. Wow, it sounded way too much like I knew what I was talking about there. I'll have to tone it down a little bit. Then we just started cooking, siding our brains out. Zip, zap, zoop, bang, 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 until we got to this top piece of siding that was the most difficult piece on the entire building because not only did it have to go over a window and a door, it had to extend out with an angle on either end to match the pitch of the roof. Now instead of trying to wrestle one giant piece all the way across and figure all that out, I decided to do it in two pieces. Not two permanent pieces, I basically took two pieces and I figured out all my cuts and angles and I'm gonna use these two pieces as a template. So. First I started with the right side that's going to have to go over the door. I cut out all the pieces that I thought I needed to cut out and I cut my angle that I needed to match the pitch of my roof, again just using the track saw. And when I was done cutting all those pieces out, I had this crazy looking piece right here. Eh? Nutso. Then I carried that piece up to see if all of my math and markings were correct. And what do you know? I nailed it on the very first try. Nice. Uh, look at that thing. Love it when a plan comes together. Then I made another piece for the left hand side that was the exact right length to butt into that piece. Then I took both of those pieces, I laid them out on a full length piece, and I used them as a template to trace out all the different shapes I needed to cut out to make this thing work over the entire span of the front of the building. Once I had all those smaller pieces traced out onto a full length piece, it was as simple as just cutting on the dotted line and hopefully I'll have a full length piece that fits exactly where I need it to. 
So back to the Champion Traxa. I gotta tell you, this thing has been such a huge help on cutting all these pieces out. I don't know what I would have done without it. I would have had to actually use some skill. And then we took this full length piece back up and hoped that it would fit right into place where it needed to. And what do you know? We flippin' nailed it. I mean, sure, I could show you the footage of us standing around staring at this for an hour while we came up with this plan, but you don't need to see that. All you need to know is that we're pretty much experts at siding at this point. With that piece done, it was pretty easy to get the rest of the siding up there and in place, and in no time we had the entire building sided. We did this entire thing in a day and a half and I'm a huge fan of siding now. There was only one thing left to do, and that was to caulk every single seam around our windows, around our door, around our trim, and there were a lot of them. So this took a while. Again, another thing I'm not gonna show you hours and hours of footage of. Just know I caulked and caulked and caulked. Unless you're one of those weird people that say cocked. But it's not cock, it's caulk. And with that, the treeless treehouse was really starting to look quite sophisticated. Small town anywhere USA. Hey, hope you enjoyed that video. We are getting so freaking close to having this thing wrapped up. Well, the outside of it wrapped up. We still got a lot to do on the inside, but we might take a break, save that for springtime. I don't know. We have one more video left this year, and I'm not gonna tell you what we're doing in that one yet. But, whoa, I might not have to worry about falling off here anymore after the next video. All right, check the video description. Go sign up for our Patreon account. There's links down there. Buy yourself some Merchandise. Okay. Get off my stoop. I'm just kidding. Stay as long as you want. <laughs>